Hey, I'm Jay, you're watching Plasma Channel. Tesla coils are about as sci-fi as you can get, right? They shoot lightning out of the tops and energy through the air. My love for high voltage actually goes back to a Tesla coil from about 15 years ago. Now, I so happen to believe that coils are a source of beauty and that we should appreciate every single component that makes up a coil. That's why I've built this. It takes 15 volts from a battery and converts it into about 110 to 120,000 volts that shoots out the top. It's capable of all the typical things Tesla coils can do, transmitting wireless power, amazing lightning displays, and jamming local radio signals. Mm, hello FCC. But with one major difference. This one is see-through and it's built almost entirely of acrylic. You're gonna learn how it was made and maybe even how to make one yourself. Coming up. First, why a Tesla coil made of acrylic? Well, besides giving you the opportunity to look inside of a Tesla coil while it's working, which is pretty sweet, I personally believe that looks matter as much as function. And if you look online, there's a plethora of DIY videos on how to make your own Tesla coil, but there's none that show you how to make a museum quality display piece that'll last for years and basically be a party stopper. So this is how I built mine. I documented the whole process so that you can follow along. Quick note though, this coil does use the high voltage power supply from a few videos back. It was a massive hit. It turns 15 volts into about 15,000. For step-by-step -step instructions on how to build this power source, click the link in the video description or in the card up above. Let's begin by talking about supplies, all of which will also be linked down below. Being an acrylic Tesla coil, this is an important note. Working with acrylic sucks. It chips, it cracks, and the glue is thinner than water. Literally, it's less viscous than water, so it runs absolutely everywhere. Regardless, building this coil starts with creating the base, which involves a lot of acrylic bonding, so we just gotta dig right in. Legit, that glue will take several minutes to dry because acrylic gluing involves melting the plastic together chemically and then bonding it. So while we're waiting for that to dry, I'd really like to talk about the importance of this video's sponsor. One of the roadblocks to learning and even reading is often free time. I'm usually not a big reader because I'd rather work on the next video or my next experiment. Any one of my friends or family can tell you I'm being totally honest here. However, that's the beauty of Audible books provided by audible.com. While you're working, cooking, or even writing video ideas for your YouTube channel, you can stream any of tens of thousands of audiobooks. If stories are not your thing, no big deal. Members receive one audiobook credit a month and access to the all-new Plus catalog, which features thousands of select audiobooks, podcasts, Audible originals, guided fitness and meditation programs, and even sleep tracks for better rest, which is awesome. I could use a lot more of that one. So you can continue learning and improving yourself simply by listening. Right now I'm listening to Dark Matter and Dark Energy by Brian Clegg. It's totally legit and touches on how the numbers don't add up in the universe if you only take into account visible matter. The universe is expanding, but there's kind of a missing variable to it all. 
And the book is narrated by a British dude, so you know it's good. To get started on a free 30-day trial, go to www.audible.com slash Plasma Channel or text Plasma Channel to 500-500. Not only will you find endless choices, but you'll also be supporting this channel. You might as well just take advantage of it. All right, the glue's probably dry, so let's go take a look. The base is solid. It looks really good. This is why I like acrylic. So now to add the flyback power source. Again, to see how that's made, check out the link in the video description. A bit more difficult was building the primary capacitor. You see, Tesla coils require power to be pulsed in them in order to work in the first place. And the primary capacitor is responsible for storing up energy from the high voltage power source to later be pulsed, and you'll see why shortly. Now this is an MMC, meaning it's built up of multiple smaller capacitors, multi-mini cap, because that makes it more reliable. Each cap is rated at 3000 volts and 10 nanofarads. These capacitors are wired in series parallel, meaning two capacitors are in parallel with five of those sets in series to increase the voltage rating. This leads to a combined voltage rating of 15,000 volts at four nanofarads. That's a stored potential energy of about a half a joule per bang. Next to be built was the spark gap, and luckily this was really straightforward. This coil uses an adjustable spark gap with low, medium, and high power. The spark gap acts as a high voltage switch and is responsible for dumping all the energy stored up in the primary capacitor into the primary coil. The entire device is dependent on the spark gap firing. And luckily, it works all by itself. Then to finish off the primary circuit was the primary coil. When the spark gap fires, it dumps energy into this coil of wire. The primary coil basically is responsible for converting the energy stored up in the capacitor into really intense electromagnetic pulses. These windings you see are spaced intentionally about a half an inch from the edge of the acrylic for added insulation because what goes inside of this acrylic will be pumping out close to about 100,000 volts. The secondary coil. This is a second coil of wire responsible for converting the electromagnetic pulses from the primary coil back into electricity, but at a much higher voltage. Winding the wire on a secondary is basically an art form in itself. It takes time and a lot of patience. It's really best done using a lathe if you have one. Or you could just be a long-haired heathen like me and use a drill. I wound the secondary with about 900 turns of 32 gauge magnet wire. Notice how perfectly smooth the winding is. That's also intentional. Any gaps, kinks, or overlapping wire will cause high voltage to shoot out of the side of the secondary and just become a total mess, kind of like a Nickelback concert. I covered both ends with tape and attached both wire ends to the bolts in the center of the acrylic discs. There's one mistake that I continue to include in all of my battery powered Tesla coil designs, and that is to have an on-off switch, pretty common sense. That's why I've added a control panel right next to the flyback power source that has positive and negative voltage in, an electrical ground, and an on-off switch. Well, look at that. I can learn. On speaking of electrical ground, the bottom of this Tesla coil is covered in aluminum foil tape, which acts as a really simple counterpoise and allows for some form of grounding. It's connected directly to the base of the secondary coil. Without this, the coil would work about as well as a beached whale. And with that, the coil's now done. Look at it. This is absolutely, I love it. It's beautiful. Uh, now, of course, it's not wired up yet, so we need to do that. And since this is a standard spark gap Tesla coil, it does follow the schematic of a standard spark gap coil. Graphic overlay. It's wired exactly as shown. The flyback supply connects up to the spark gap with the capacitor on one arm and both arms connect up to the primary coil. The secondary coil sits inside of the primary and is only connected up to the electrical ground. Now it can be turned on. 
Just remember though that while you enjoy this high voltage device, be safe and use the one hand rule at all times. It saves lives. That's the beast. And at 15 volts in at 2.5 amps, that's about 38 watts worth of usage and uh, three inches of arcs at 38 watts. I'm pretty happy with that. The coil is precisely tuned with both the secondary and the primary circuits both resonating at about 580 kilohertz. Matching frequencies leads to what's called resonant voltage rise, which drastically boosts the voltage until the air simply just can't take it. If you're wondering why I didn't show more of the high powered test, my coil lost the battle to gravity. So I'll need to rebuild. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully you enjoyed this build. If you have any questions or comments about it, please don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. You know I read all the comments. Also, I'd like to give a special shout out to all my patrons who support my work financially. If you'd like to encourage longer, more frequent uploads, please consider supporting my work on Patreon as well. Thank you very much. You stay classy.